Hello everyone. Today I want to start the DS, 3DS RPG project. You might recognize the music in the background already. Uh, yes. I want to start off with Chrono Trigger. And I've got it running on my 3DS here. Now I've had a look in my um, activity log on my uh, 3DS, on the one on which I played it. I saw from the stats in there that I started the game in uh, 2013. Uh, that's when I uh, bought it. I still got the receipt. I certainly played it for a bit then. I must have started it. Why I put it down I can't remember. I possibly found it quite confusing. I don't know. I picked it up again in 2017 and according to the log I finished it almost exactly three years ago to the date. I clocked up a total of 70 hours uh, in the game. The actual time on the save file for the finishing the game is around 64 hours. Uh, so as you can see I spent a good amount of time in the game and that is a testament to the fact that the game held my interest that I enjoyed it enough that I obviously tried to do everything that the game had to offer, at least in one playthrough, and uh, completed the game. Now let's have a quick look at the manual. Those old DS games uh, came with some beautiful manuals back then. So most of you will probably have played the game, be familiar with it, so I won't spend a lot of time today um, talking about um, the game itself, about the story or etc, because uh, most of you will be familiar with that. This is more me trying to talk about, as usual, my experience with the game, and obviously my experience will be very, very different to yours. And I will talk about that quite a bit more towards the end of the video. I've sort of divided it into three parts. This is the introduction. In the middle section we'll take a bit of a breather and we'll have a, a tea break. And then in the third and, and final section I'll talk a bit about my, my feelings for the game. But as usual I put in timestamps so if if there's anything you are not interested in, you can just skip to what you want to see. So this is the opening page with a beautiful illustration for Chrono Trigger. Um, that's of course the, um, the Epoch, the time travelling machine, uh, plane, whatever. And the opening page says, the gates of time stand open. Beyond their darkened threshold lies the path ordained by fate, a journey to the forgotten past, the distant future, and even to the very end of time. An epic tale that spans the ages has already begun. Now that would have any kid instantly intrigued and travel to the very end of time. Wow, we normal humans can't even imagine what that might be or where it might be, so that is a tall order. Here are the main characters, uh, obviously Chrono himself and Marl, and I won't go further into her, her particular background as a character, just in case you haven't played the game yet, because I know there are people out there who haven't. Um, I uh, caught up with a few people recently online who, uh, while not 
quite my advanced age were certainly in the um, adult category in their in their middle years maybe their 30s or 40s who said wow I've never actually played this game and their friends encouraged them and said wow I played this as a kid I have such nostalgia for it you must play it you know those words you must play this game and then you might have a falling out with your friend if you don't like it as much as your friend. Those things happen. So here you see um, Luca, the, um, the inventor engineer, and one of my favourite characters at the bottom there is Frog. Frog is awesome. And finally we have Ayla, uh, the young woman who lives in what we would call prehistory, prehistoric times, tens of thousands of years ago, and Robo, who is from the distant future, uh, another big favourite of mine. So on the back it says, the RPG of the ages returns. Now, Chrono Trigger, originally came out 25 years ago. I know most of you will, will know that. It, it is a real, real classic. It was published originally for the SNES, Super Nintendo Entertainment System, and was later ported to various platforms. But I think most people agree that the DS version is one of the very best. I enjoyed playing that version very much. I have the PlayStation version as well, and I tried it and I backed out again because honestly, it's like walking really, really slowly through molasses. That's what it's like playing that PlayStation version. It's a shame. I think the, the DS version is, is probably the most convenient and maybe easily accessible for modern audiences because you can play it on a, a 3DS or 2DS XL. Chrono Trigger is famous for many reasons. One of them is that Square hired what they considered the dream team to create this game. The dream team was Hironobi Sakaguchi of Final Fantasy fame, Yuji Hori, the, the creator of Dragon Quest, and Akira Toriyama, the famous designer of manga, uh, Dragon Ball, and also the artist for Dragon Quest. Additionally, Masato Kato wrote the story, and the composer was Yasunori Mitsuda. He fell ill during the um, development of the game, and the composition was finished by none other than Nobuo Uematsu. So you can see the game is stuffed to the guilds with famous names. Now that in itself, of course, does not guarantee a masterpiece. There are no guarantees in, in, in making a game. But as it turned out, they all did fantastic work. It is considered one of the, the great classics in the RPG genre. Now, once you've uh, finished the game, uh, clear it once. As you can see from my, hopefully you can see that from my save files here. The game offers a new game plus. Now, I believe that back then, 25 years ago, that was quite a new feature. We're very used to it nowadays. But back then, I think it was very uncommon. I don't know whether Chrono Trigger was the very first game to do that, but it must have been one of the first. Uh, one of you probably knows more about this than I do. And of course, this feature went on to be used by Square in Final Fantasy games and uh, 
by many, many other developers um, to, to add bonus to their games. So I don't know about you, but I'm getting um, a bit thirsty. I need just a little break and Sugamon is telling me it's time. He wants to have his afternoon cuppa of green tea. Now Sugamon is very, very partial uh, to a green tea that comes, not surprisingly, from Sugamo, his home district in Tokyo. Um, so we're going to do a quick infusion and it's one of these little um, uh, pyramid um, tea bags filled with green matcha goodness. It smells as if you're walking through a freshly mown meadow. Beautiful. While we're doing that and enjoying our cuppa plus a few um, snacks from Sugamon's home district, I will try and put up the opening sequence of Chrono Trigger for us all to enjoy. So uh, please get your cuppa or your favourite uh, beverage, sit back, relax. I'll be uh, making our uh, tea now. Um, I always do my green tea at temperature 80, no more than that. I find that uh, any higher temperature can easily spoil the very um, sensitive, volatile green tea components. It easily goes bitter. It's a very unpleasant taste. If you've ever been served a green tea and you thought, oh, bitter, then I would say the water was too hot. Uh, that's a very common mistake uh, people make, especially in um, cafes and the like. Uh, so I, I like brewing it myself at home. Sugamon is really looking forward to that. Plus he's got a variety of little um, uh, snacks from his um, home district. Um, these little rice uh, puff balls, I'm quite, um, I'm quite partial to those myself. Um, these kind of um, uh, little jelly figures, um, that's, that's Sugamon's department, I don't go for those. Um, anyway, we've got a nice selection here. I, I never leave green tea in very long. I find it, it usually brews quite quickly. Once again, if you leave it in too long, the taste might get too, too strong. Let's see. Ah, oh, that aroma. Wonderful. Cheers. Um, let's roll the Chrono Trigger opening and enjoy it.
so after that lovely tea break um, let me just talk about my response to Chrono Trigger. I want to put it in the context of something that I've talked about quite a lot here on the channel, also on Twitter, and that is that I am not convinced that it is possible to ever pick one artwork, a book, a film, a game, and say, this is the best ever. It is flawless, it's a masterpiece, and nothing else comes close to it. Now, I know a lot of people feel that way about one particular game or movie or whatever. And I think there are people who would say that Chrono Trigger is a masterpiece that should never ever be criticised for anything and that anybody who doesn't acknowledge that doesn't know what they're talking about. You know what I mean, you know, that, that type of argument. Uh, I don't engage with that at all because I live on a different planet altogether. You see, when Chrono Trigger first came out, and so many young people played it 25 years ago, they formed a close, almost mystical attachment to this game. And 25 years later, they're grown up and they think back to this game with an enormous amount of nostalgia. And you know what? I can totally see that. I can almost smell and taste that nostalgia because even for me, at my age, it is almost possible to recreate that sense of nostalgia, but not quite. And the issue is, I'm not 12 years old. However much I'd like to be, I'm not. I'm someone who spent nearly seven decades on this planet and I cannot change the fact of having been born in the 1950s and not in the 1980s. Um, so I obviously will see and experience anything very, very differently from young people today in their 20s people in their 30s and 40s. That is inevitable. I have found over the years that a book or a movie that I once thought was the height of fantastic inside, meaningful messages, great storyline, two decades later, I reread it, I rewatch it, and I think, oh, yes, that's interesting. It's, it's a good movie, but, you know, I, I, I've moved on. I, my life has changed. My ideas have changed, not completely, but enough to me have a very different perspective. It's all about perspective, really. So the one thing that happened to me while I was playing this absolutely wonderful game was at almost any moment at the back of my mind I had this thought oh I wish I'd been able to play this game when I was 12 years old. That's what I thought a lot of the time while playing Chrono Trigger. And in a way that tells you how powerful this game is, to have raised this emotion that I had it such a strong wish to be able to experience it, but as a child, going into all this for the first time. You know, this enormous panorama, I can hardly call it time travel, it's, it's going through almost the whole of known 
own human history, certainly back then, you know, from the earliest prehistory into imagining what the distant future might be like. It's a mind-blowing concept. And for a 12-year-old, it would be one of the formative experiences, really. And you'd go forward from that, and I would say any of the kids who played Chrono Trigger took it seriously and, and, and played it again and again, probably, will have gone on to become, I hope, very thoughtful adults who can cope with ideas and concepts. And that's one of the important things, one of the important roles I see video games playing, really. And parents need to realise this. My message to parents is you cannot do anything much better in educational terms for your children than to give them a game like a Chrono Trigger or there are many other games of similar stature that can fulfil that role of opening a young person's mind while giving them wonderful entertainment at the same time. This is something that is very special to video games. Um, movies can do that to some extent, but you're very passive while watching a movie. Books can do that, and as you know, I'm a great proponent of uh, what books have to offer. Um, I've done a you know, whole, whole video on that in my Tech of My Childhood series. Uh, but video games occupy a very special spot here. They, they've got the ability, because they cross so many media styles and genre, uh, that they can fulfil that role so well. Of course, there's no way I could ever have played this game or any other RPG of its era as a 12 or 13 year old or as a 15 or 20 year old because video games did not exist back then. So I can only come at it now as an old woman. I'd like to think I'm open-minded and I enjoy experiences from all walks of life and all I can say is Chrono Trigger is a fantastic game. It is rightly called a classic and if you haven't got it in your DS library yet and you love RPGs, I would say please consider getting it and playing it. It really is that good. I haven't mentioned this before, a Chrono Trigger uses the active time battle system. Now, I think back in its day, 25 years ago, that was still quite new, and uh, Chrono Trigger does it really well. Uh, you learn skills, as you do in any RPG, um, as you go through the game, and they're called techs, what you learn, tech or techs. And the lovely thing is that in your party, the people you, you fight with together, you can form combinations of these techs and you can spark combos uh, that will uh, grant you wonderful uh, strength and abilities uh, to, to overcome your increasingly strong opponents until you finally end up at the end of time, possibly, and you have to battle the final boss, la boss, and overcome him in order to complete the game. I remember that back in 2017 when I finally uh, finished the game, I played it exclusively for that period until I had completed it. I played nothing else, which is, if you know me, highly unusual for me. I just that Chrono Trigger was it, I had my head stuck right in. And you have to do that because it has some very complex mechanisms, in particular around how the different story strands weave together and the different timelines. Now there's one further aspect of Chrono Trigger uh, that I haven't touched upon. It's an interesting and quite uh, complex 
sex issue, and that is the endings. A Chrono Trigger has multiple endings. In fact, there were 12 in the original uh, game back in 1995. I think that was very unusual back then. It added such a layer of complexity to the whole game, especially considering how the save files work. Um, so you had to be extremely uh, careful and crafty about how you managed all that to be able to get, if you wanted to, all the endings, which is quite an undertaking. I haven't done that. In fact, I can't remember how many endings I got. It's a while ago now. The DS game added a 13th ending, which you can only access, as far as I know, via the new game plus. And that only unlocks once you completed your um, final boss battle with Lavos uh, via a particular route. I don't remember going on to do the 13th ending, but I'm not uh, totally sure. So once again, those of you who've played um, Chrono Trigger extensively uh, will know more about it. I just thought I should mention it here because it, it once again shows what a groundbreaking game it was in so many ways. And still is to this day, I suppose. I was perfectly happy once I'd completed the game to put it aside and move on. But as I've shown you my, my save file, I spent a considerable amount of time in Chrono Trigger and I, I felt like that was, that was just right for me, you know. Uh, other people may perhaps like to spend over 100 hours in it. I can totally understand that. And then there may be others who say, what's the fastest route through here? You know, we all approach these things differently. But yeah, I, I took my time to explore the world pretty much every nook and cranny and, and tried to see as much as I could and talk to, you know, all the NPCs and stuff like that. Yeah, I hope you can see now why I picked Chrono Trigger as my first DS RPG to discuss. Not because I've had an awful lot to say about it, except for it's fantastic, please play it, but because it's such a great example for explaining where I come from. And I feel that's important for those of you who like to follow my videos, that you understand my position. People have often asked me, uh, Britta, will you do a top 10 of your favorite RPGs ever? And I've always said, look, I don't do that. I never do my top 10, you know, RPGs of all time. I know only too well that what might feel like the top games for me at the moment could well change. In a couple of years down the track, I'd have to revise that video. I would have to constantly update and say, oh, okay, I played another game and I think that's now number nine. And I'm not in favour of this approach, especially since my top ten, assuming I had one, I don't, might not be terribly useful or insightful for you if you're 22 years old you will see games very differently from me, possibly. I know a lot of you ask me for recommendations and all I can ever say is, this is what I enjoy playing, give you my personal impression, and you may enjoy the game, you may not, you may see it very differently. It, that's all I can ever say. So pinning myself into a corner and saying, top five games of all time here, um, those assessments usually have to be revised uh, down the track, words have to be eaten. I don't see the value in it because there are so many wonderful games out there and we've had a, a great discussion this last week on the community tab about the games called Death End Request. I've told people how much I enjoyed the 
first game and, and really look forward to the second game. Now, the first game isn't perfect. It's not a masterpiece. Actually, it has a lot of flaws, but that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy it. I enjoyed it for what it was and what it attempted to do. And I always feel if you can go into a game with that spirit, rather than looking for that elusive one masterpiece out there, then you're going to have a much better time with games, with books, with movies, with your friends, with anything in life, really. That, that would be my message. That's how I look at games. In that spirit, I give you my impressions and my assessments, and I hope you will take them in that spirit. And I've had such great feedback and response from so many of you that I feel that I feel quite honoured, really, that you uh, that you like my videos and find it of interest what I show you from my own library, things to discover, to share, to talk about, whether we like them or not. It's all it's all important. It's all part of our experience of navigating our path through this life, just like Chrono and his friends had to navigate their way through a very, very complex labyrinth, weaving in and out of time. But we don't have that privilege. We, we can only live on the one timeline, as far as I know, although I'd really love to be able to, to explore a parallel timeline. I sometimes dream of that. Wouldn't that be great? Anyway, I've been rambling on long enough. Thank you very much for listening. That was Chrono Trigger, my thoughts. Thank you for watching. Please keep well. I'm Food for Dogs. Bye-bye.